I had to say it again. Whoa, what a wild ride. We just got flew out and flew back in. We brought back Vincent Dockstater with us. Terry, say hi. Terry, you're on mute. Take yourself off of mute, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hello, Vincent. Welcome. Hey. So, um, Vincent, I've been watching you. Take yourself off mute, just in case, though. Um, I've been watching you and showing your artwork. The other day, I showed, saw you with your door and your room all laid out with your beautiful artwork. And um, I, I really was interested in sharing that and sharing you because I've seen you a couple of times on another show and you have some profound things that you're going through. And I think just having you to be able to share it will just be awesome because everybody, I guess, is in different places in the journey. And I just feel like like you have something to offer and I wanted to hear it. I love, especially when we can hear it from the male point of view too, about how much we need to love and nurture ourselves and also to creatively express ourselves. Um, but um, you're, you've reached this point now, you're doing really well. And I don't know where you really wanna start with your story. Um, I mean, you could start with anything, like you could start with your childhood maybe. Did you have a, um, I know you had a good relationship with your dad and he inspired you to be open to the UFOs. So I don't know if you want to start with that. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I had a pretty normal childhood. Uh, just grew up with, I have four sisters. I was the only boy, the oldest boy. Um, Oh, you got lucky. You were the oldest. You're lucky, so you didn't get beat up by a bunch of girls. So. Oh, trust me. They just had my dad beat me up. <laughs> 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 but you know, it wasn't too bad though. I I I can't complain. I had a great childhood. You know. Uh, That's awesome. But yeah, growing up as a kid, uh, my dad he he used to have his buddies over late at night, and I would hear him talking about his UFO stories and um. Talk, he used to, I remember him talking about Atlantis having vegetation under the ice and stuff and how there's all this stuff that we don't know about that's coming to light. And that really intrigued me just from a kid, you know, like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then as I got a little older, he used to talk about aliens and driving through New Mexico. He used to tell me about UFOs that he would see all the time. He used crazy lights. He said one that would was like a ball of lights and then it spread out in four directions all the way back and then all the way back and then just disappeared shot off into space um about yeah, how really, old were you or what year was that do you think that was that he that he was telling you these stories when was what about what time was that uh be late 80s early 90s okay so in the 80s awesome yeah and then uh then we moved out to uh Johnson's Creek, which my grandma had an 80 acre farm. And that's where we started to do a lot of the sky watching with binoculars and stuff. But my mom got me good one time because I watched that show Fire in the Sky. It, when you're a kid, you should not watch that movie. No, no, no. Because my mom's, it was the middle of the night, my mom says, there's a UFO in the backyard. We had cornfields and it was the corn, the the corn harvesting machine coming through. There's lights everywhere. I was the scariest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> but who was driving? Who was driving? Was it your the dad? The corn crop guy? Oh, no, okay. not my dad. No, my mind would have went crazy if I had a cornfield in my backyard. My mind would have been going crazy all the time. <laughs> but that is uh, the first place I had a dream with alien in it, and. I had a dream that uh, an alien was peeking in through my window from the top of the window down, which was weird because, like, I live on the second story floor, you know, like, how is there an alien peeking in my window? But what correlates good with that for me is my dad told me the same time that happened, he came in and checked on me, and he said there was a ghost sitting in the rocking chair next to me while I was sleeping. And he didn't do nothing about it. He's like, okay, there's a ghost. I'm just going to leave you alone. <laughs> but 
But I think that has something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe if it was like an alien pretending to be a ghost. But I don't know. I guess I don't know what it is. It's just between an alien and a ghost. Like it's something that's there that's not normally there. So I don't know. You call it whatever, right? Yeah, supernatural yeah. stuff. Yeah. But that's when it all started. And then ever since I was. Go ahead. Go ahead, Terry. Well, ever since. Because did you have a feeling I, of protection? I, 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 I couldn't hear you. Okay, so Terry, if you have a question, you just go ahead and type it and I'll read it. Okay. But did you have any strength? Um, like, okay, so did, were you in fear at that point, or did you have a feeling of safety, or what did you feel when when this was happening? Oh, it freaked me out. <laughs> it freaked okay. me out. Uh, and mostly because of that movie, Fire in the Sky. Uh, that freaked me out too. But then, uh, ever since dad, then, I've been. Is your dad still here with us? No, he died. Uh, he actually died in 2014. The same. My son was born at uh, his funeral. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm sorry for wow. your loss. Yeah. I mean, he's in a good place. I know he's. Yeah. I know he's yeah, still man. with me. But so uh, during that time, you said you felt like something else happened after you had the incidents with the chair and the aliens in the field. Yeah, ever well, just ever since then is I've really been into like what 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 is going on, you know, always looking in the sky and ancient aliens became one of my favorite shows for years, and then I got into uh, drugs really bad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for years until uh, 2020 when I seen a a video by Elizabeth April. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was. Before before the video, I had a UFO experience up close. Maybe mm -hmm. I should talk about that first. Um, it was me and my sister's two kids out out in the front of her house in the middle of the day. Oh. And middle of the day, broad daylight. And I look up in the sky and off in the distance, I could just see like a black dot. I'm like, what in the heck is that? So I was like, kids, go in the house and get your mom and dad. So they ran in the house to go get their mom and dad. I'm still out there, like, looking at this thing. And it it was just like, if you know how a bubble looks in the in the, in the the sky when it's floating around? It's like, they, they're, like, here, and then they're, like, far away. It did the same thing, but it moved towards me. But by the time my sister and her husband and uh, my nephew came, outside we were all lined up at the edge of the dirt road looking straight up at this thing and it it came directly above us now i'd have to say between 200 and 400 feet tops above us directly above us and it just stopped and then i just remember being like hypnotized by it i literally felt hypnotized like looking straight up at it and the next thing i remember is my nephew saying what's going on and then it started to float off in the opposite direction the same way it came in it just flew all the way up into the sky and it's disappeared now uh i know i know it was metallic because on the very edge of it i could see the the reflection of the sun off of it but underneath it was completely black because it was just the shade because it was so bright outside and then uh, as it drifted away, my uh, my sister's husband, he's like, it's just a plane. It's just a plane. And then that was it. We all walked away like nothing happened. It was just weird. I didn't even talk to my sister about it till like weeks later. Well, we kind of learned with Beth, like how Beth Noya's story where multiple people experience it. It's almost like uh, people avoid connecting on that level it's it's just easier to kind of explain it away rather than we're all crazy mm -hmm. or we're all you know even when it's a shared experience you would think like oh this would be more believable for people 
as a shared experience, but they still find it quite difficult to reconcile because once you once you start dealing with that, the fact that this could be real, like it change it it changes everything you've learned about life, right? <laughs> You know? It sure does. It sure does because it goes from uh, somebody said this to I'm actually witnessing it. You know, yeah. And it's, it's probably easier to believe someone else's story than to be able to say it yourself. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But this experience for me, it wasn't frightening at all. It was just really intriguing. I was like amazed. I was in awe. You know, it, it wasn't scary like when I was a kid. Right. I didn't have any fear at all. It was, I don't know if it's because I was just like in a daze. Like, I don't know when you see something like that, it, it like trips out your reality. Like, did, did that really just happen? Like, <laughs> you know? Right. I don't know if, um, once, so, so before you, you kind of mentioned that you dabbled with, ex, was experimenting with drugs. And it kind of got the best of you for a while. And I didn't know if you wanted to discuss that experience. How did yeah, I mean, it? I, well, I wanted to clarify if it was triggered by any trauma or. No, it was basically just experimental. Like I was in a band and that was just the thing that we were doing at the time. And I got into it a little harder than I should have, but um what got me out of the drugs is what I really like to talk about. And yeah, that's, yeah. uh, um, I watched a, a video by Elizabeth April and it got me off the drugs. So I'm, it was a starseed Atlantis, uh, starseed, uh, Atlantis Lemurian starseed soul activation video, I believe. Yeah. And I, I actually would watched it live cause I, I started watching her because I seen her on Leech Leak Project with Rex Bear. Mm -hmm. And uh ever since then I started watching her and this one video, I don't like I, I still to this day don't know. I wish I could talk to her about it, but I don't know what happened in that video, if it was hypnosis, because I know hypnosis is a real thing or what, but whatever it was, from that day forward, I was no longer addicted to drugs. I still smoke marijuana, but I wasn't on the hard drugs no more. So, which I have quit the marijuana now though. So. Right. Yeah. But also after that happened is when my life really changed. It's when I became uh, aware of star seeds and aware of a lot of the alien stuff going on. I had been watching uh, Bashar and Corey good and Dave Wilcock and stuff like that before that, but. I didn't have the transformation that I did after watching that video. And I don't know why, but I just started painting. It just, just happened. And not only did I start painting, I, just, I because I quit doing the drugs and all that, me and my girlfriend ended up splitting up because we were no longer on the same vibration because that was one of the right. things that we did together, you know? So my whole life, my whole jacket just got ripped off, you know? I think um, it's difficult for people when they lose the relationships because they, they, they're they like, wait a minute, I'm improving my life. So why am I being rejected for improving my life? And the other person begins to feel judged by it and it becomes a disharmony, right? Yeah, I mean... I can understand why though, because I'm a totally different person. Like, yeah. I don't even look the same. <laughs> right. But it's just sad because we have children involved and I'm still trying to work yeah. out connections with that. So how long ago was this? How long ago was this this conversion, this change? Uh, 2020. I'd say it was like oh, mid-2020. Yeah. And, uh, it was quite an experience. <laughs> How I'm, did you deal I, with I'm, yeah. I was just going to say I'm grateful for it, but how did I deal with what? Well, I know you you've said that you've you've been dealing with that and I'm and you're in a place where you're grateful for it. But 2020 was so chaotic because we had riots and race wars and election and election fraud and then we had like the shots and things like that. How did you cope in 2020? Like, 
what were some of the tools that you were using to, and then you're going through a breakup at the same time. So how did you deal with all of that all at once, you know? Well, um, I went to jail that helped, uh, part of it. And then after jail, I ended up moving up north with my sister in Oshkosh. And then from there, I moved here. Uh, disc golf really helped a lot in getting out in nature. And that's still what I do every day. Like, I have to walk. If you don't walk, you're missing out. Because walking is the best form of meditation and collecting your thoughts and just being free, getting fresh air, getting sunlight. Like, I feel like that's what healed me is just walking and getting out in nature. I guess I wonder, a person like you is, uh, we, we come into contact with certain things and maybe these things are trying to pull us away from our destiny, but somehow maybe your guides pulled you back. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you maybe feel like you were destined, but these things were coming at you to pull you away from who you could become. Or is it a part of the plan where you feel like it was all coming together to make you who you are? I don't know how you see that. Um, the temptations. The and, way uh, I see it, uh -huh. the way I see it is nothing ever, ever happens for no reason. Um, I mean, how could, how could you argue with creation? It created it. It didn't do it for <laughs> no reason, right? Yes. Yes. Um, another thing that too is like right after this happened uh, at my sister's house, she had a little pond. I used to walk around, you know, just to get outside. And there was always a white snowy egret, a big, it's like a, like a crane bird, snowy mm -hmm. egret that showed up and it would show up almost every day. And then one day it stopped showing up. And then I ended up moving here. Um, and now I go disc golfing here and I have a white deer that shows up at my disc golf course, the only disc golf course in town. And I've been video recording her for like a year and a half now. Like she's there almost every so, day. So at first I didn't know what you were saying. So you mean disc golf. We have that here where you throw the disc. It's like playing golf, but instead you throw the disc and said, I get it. Yeah. I was like, what is he talking? <laughs> I get it now. I just wanted to clarify that so people know. So now you get to go out and play disc golf and, and you get to see your bird again. Or some well, version the bird, of it. The bird's oh, gone. Deer. Now it's now it's a white deer. Her name is Lucy a Love. White deer. A white deer and all the other deer too, but yeah, a white deer. Wow. I've never even seen one before and I see lots of deer. That's awesome. Well, well they're, I see they're about uh, every albino, day. Right? Yeah. Well, I, there's some that are albino and then some that are just like white deer. I don't know. Just I don't know if she's albino because she had, at one point she had a black spot on her tail. So I don't know. Huh. But I've seen, I've seen her since she was a baby, like literally just a baby hopping around the park. And I decided to start video recording her because I mean, how could you not do that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she, does she uh does she go with the rest of the deer? Is she with the rest of the yeah. bird? Yeah. Yep. They there's like these they're little deer too. They're not big deer. They're like three and a half, four feet tall. And they're not yeah. afraid of me. They they don't oh. run away from me. They for some reason they just don't run away from people and they just like, yeah. hey, it's just another human. How are you doing over there? I'm just gonna keep eating and wow. pooping over here. <laughs> Where I, where I live, not in the apartment block, but around us, we have deer in the city and they will actually come up to your front step and just be, you know, like you'll open your door and the deer is looking at you through through there because there's just a lot in, in the area and they've become very uh, tame. Um, I guess they're not afraid of us anymore because what are we going to do? You know, they know they're pretty safe, so, but they can yeah. be a nuisance. <laughs> Because they're eating everybody's plants now. Oh, yes. Your gardens. They, well, yeah, everybody's gardens. They're all 
trying to find things to keep the deer away. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but I love the deer though. I had them show up in my yard while I was cutting the grass, like literally with the yeah. lawnmower going and everything. He walks right up to me, like uh, I pick up my phone, I'm like I'm gonna have to record this. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you, do you know the deer with the uh, as a spirit animal? Do you know what the deer means? Uh, I've I've read it before, but I forget. Yeah, it's about about gentleness, right? Let me get my book. Yeah, def definitely, we can see that in you. Um, I just know that the deer for me, that's just, it's a sign that I'm supposed to be here. That's, that's the way yeah. I take it. Yeah, for sure. I, and, I was uh, doing peacock. So I was picking up peacock feathers for now. Like I can have a herd of peacocks in my yard now. It's really nice. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I also have a, from, from owls and hawks. Owls. Yeah. Hawks. Go ahead, Terry. So, so um, for, this is from uh, Ted Andrews. He says the deer is um, uh, move gently into new areas, follow the lure of new studies. Practical pursuits bring surprising rewards. Neat. That makes sense. Neat. So then we were talking about ways that you've been coping since 20. 20 with all the changes and the loss and one big thing you talk about is just that you're happy to be able to love up on yourself to have that energy for yourself where you didn't apply that before and I'd like for you to talk about you know how did you get to that place of peace well to be honest a lot of it was in the artwork uh I found peace in painting. I started off with doing fluid art pour painting. And before I started that, I didn't even, I didn't know I could paint at all. You know, I never tried, you know, never even thought of it. And then one day I seen a video of, uh, on YouTube of it. And I was like, wow, I think I'm going to try that. And, uh, so I started the pour painting and that was really cool. But one thing about that is I would see be I started to see beings and aliens in the paintings and other people couldn't see them. Like I would point it out to them. They wouldn't be able to tell what I'm talking about. You know, it's clearly right there in front of them. But I don't know. Some people just don't see things the same way, I guess, sometimes. Right. So I just. Uh, so it's basically it's. It's identical to looking at a cloud. You know how you can see faces in a cloud or like in the bark of a tree. And that's the same thing that was happening with my painting. So I decided, well, if I'm seeing it and not everyone else is going to see it, I wonder what they'll think once I start to take a brush and paint them in. And that's what I started doing. And I guess... It just gave me a uh, fulfillment and, you know, something to feel good about myself for that I could actually paint and people were actually looking at them and enjoying them. And it, it made me feel good that I could help make other people feel good through, you know, expressing myself. Can you see these on the screen now? Can you see them? Yeah. Okay. So this, what were you seeing in this cloud? Because I, I, I got an idea what I see, but you tell me what you see. That one was just a random, beautiful pick, but I do see a face on the right-hand side. Me too. <laughs> and then, and then there was this. Uh, one. that one looks. I was. That I was one with say, the flower. I see the fairies up in the top. Where? Yeah. Where? This one. On the. On the flower picture. Not that one. Like the a, other one. Okay. Well, we'll just go through. That one. So I I'll, see on the left. Well, I see like the, the very center of the sunlight is the head of a body and you see like a little fat lady. Oh, like, wow. So and, I'll, flip uh, through. I'll just flip through and I'll let you explain. And here you see a face. But Terry, you, these are the fairies? Is this what you're talking about? 
Terry? Uh, yeah, I can, I, on the top left, I see those are fairies. Nice. I saw this in the fire the other night. All You're right. Little beings okay. up top there. Yeah, I could see that in the fire. And then we'll let you go. Anything here? Yeah, that's the, the face right in the middle, like the big eyebrows. Yeah, yeah I see a lot of times. Well, when I, I watch Bashar uh, with Daryl Anko a lot, and you said, they said sometimes just take a camera and take random pictures of this guy. So that's what I started doing. And uh, I've gotten some pretty amazing pictures just by doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't have these in any particular order. This is your poor table? Yep. This I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure I'm going to be done with that yet. I might add some brush to it. That's just a straight pour. Mm -hmm. I love but yeah, I found, I found it just sitting on the side of the road. I'm like, you can't throw that away. It's perfectly good. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of your pours. Right? That's the table. That's the oh, same that's table. Oh, that's the table. Yep. And that's the... This picture right here was I did for my son on his tenth birthday, oh, which was just oh. it was just on the twentieth. So I asked him because I didn't have much to give him for his birthday. So I was like, "Well, what do you, what would you like me to draw you for your birthday?" And he's like, "Draw me a Ferrari that looks real." And I'm like, "Oh man, don't <laughs> ask me to do that." <laughs> I was thinking maybe a dinosaur or something, you know. But uh, so I had been put up to the challenge of drawing that which is really really hard <laughs> but it's rocking though takes me back to the sixth the grade when we used to draw yeah. cars and shoes <laughs> yes another alien i did time to blossom beautiful yeah i don't know where those messages come from i just they're just all it's all intuitive you know mm-hmm and that's a door I did, or part of the oh, door. Oh, is that a whole door? Oh, okay, that's a door. That's half of the door, yeah. The bottom half. Nice. Yeah. I uh, I get a lot of free... This yeah, is that's the other... Oh, I like that one. That's the other side of the door. Interesting. To me, I see a bear's face. <laughs> There, there's a lot going on in there. Yeah. And that's, wow. I'm, I'm still not sure I'm done with it because I might brush into it more, you know, like I did on the other paintings. Are those your feet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, as you can see, I don't ever, I don't ever walk around without socks and shoes on. So I have quite a tan line. <laughs> <laughs> and then this mushy. Mushy, yeah. I was, well, because I do music and I was going to actually, oh. I was actually going to use Mushy as my my rapper name or singer name, but I decided not to. But yeah, this, it looked to me, I was started off as an eyeball and then I was like, well, I'm going to make something going into the eyeball. And then I made footsteps as like somebody walking into the eyeball. And then it also looks like a mushroom. So that's kind of where I got that idea from. Oh, it does look. I didn't even see the mushroom. Okay, got it. Wow. And uh, this is the lady I drew the other day. Uh, I was listening to one of my songs I made and just happened to draw her. She's blue, blonde hair. I don't know much about her. I call her Freedom oh. because that was the name of the song that I was listening to. Uh -huh. But all these uh the aliens that i draw i don't plan on drawing them a lot of times i plan on trying to draw something else and i just end up with that i don't know if it's because aliens are easy for me to draw or or what's going on with that but but yeah this is beautiful and this one uh is a dragon and a fairy mm. with the rose you got the volcano in the background but a lady asked me to draw her a fairy. So I 
didn't intend on drawing a fairy in this painting or in this drawing first. First, I started off with the eyeball and I drew the dragon head and I was like, well, what else could I put in there? And I just ended up putting in the fairy there. And I was like, because that lady gave me the idea to draw a fairy. Any thoughts, Terry? I know Terry loves dragons. No, I'm just admir I'm admiring it. It's very, it, very interesting. I love her wings. I like this thing in the corner, and I don't know if I even put this one in here, but I like that thing in the corner. I like that alien. And this is well, all, also, if you like, we can take a tour on my camera. I don't know how good the camera would work, but oh, I have okay. a house. You know what I, I really have a house to do? You should make your floors black. <laughs> like well, black this, floors. I know this it's is not, not my house. Yeah. It, it's not my house, but I might be able to arrange something like that. <laughs> no, I would, when you were going through the you door know, the other day. You know what you could house, use is, is the black paper. The black paper. Or that thing like I got. I got like the Lego I, stuff that goes on the yeah, floor. Black paper. <laughs> I could totally yeah, I could do that, but just even that. the black, the heavy black paper. That would be cool, or maybe like the like that and stuff that they wrap cars with. Kind of like like that, or there's mm -hmm. this rubber thing that you put on the garage floor, like a rubber thing, and it's black, or even a black rug. But oh, I mean, yeah, I just think like if you go in your room and it'll just it'll just change the whole room, like it'll be like this vacuum space. Well, I have uh, one of those color changing light bulbs, and yeah. you should see the you should see the room when that's going because you can change the setting where it changes colors like yeah. three different colors, uh -huh. and all the paintings morph. Like every right. time the light changes, they all morph. It's like really cool. <laughs> did you did you want to take a tour? Did you want me to Come finish going through those? We can if you'd like. I've uh, got I've got a lot of paintings. I don't know how can oh, you see okay. good on the camera? Um, I'll make you big again. There you go. Yeah, look at you. Are those the hawk feathers? Either hawk or owl. Just don't tell no one because it's illegal to have them. Isn't but, it crazy? But yeah, I found these uh just at the deer park. Oh nice. Do you go by mm. the meaning of the feathers? Oh man, that's nice. What's that? A smoky yeah. quartz? This is a clear quartz. Clear quartz. Okay, I can't see all. All right. But that's a good I, chunk. It's not big compared to my uh, little geode over there. Look at that! I like those big eyes behind it. Yeah, it's just hiding back there. Who is okay. that guy? It reminds me it's of just a, for Christmas. It's just random. Just random. Okay. All right, now I got to figure out how to do this camera here. And that's a dragon right behind your shoulder, too. There's a blue dragon. Right there. Wow. Yep. Oh, yeah. Don't let Terry wow. come to your house. If Terry comes to your house, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have lots, lots of paintings here. It's one of my, I don't know what I'm pointing at here. You see this in oh, my yeah. drawing. The blue with the ship and then the pyramid. Ooh, nice pyramid. Yeah, got the pyramid one. Mm -hmm. mm. Blue avian. Oh. Another alien. My oracle cards. I I'm just kinda like give you like a spin around. This one was one of no my problem. favorites too. I don't know. Just because I, I be can't Sleep. I'd be so excited. Okay. I can't really see too well what I'm showing you. So if you no want me problem. to go up or down, just say just say that. Okay. But yeah, I have all kinds of stuff, you know. I just go by the here. door in that top corner by the door to my friend that I like. You know who I'm talking about. Oh yeah. We'll get there. I love that thing. Oh, wait a minute. I see three eyes. Okay. Is there a bunch of dragons right there? Slow down. Yeah, it's Two dragons and how neat! And I like the one too, where it's um, it's almost like that one's being teleported or something. Like that alien is coming shooting down from the bottom. Nice. 
I don't know if Victor got frozen. Um, Vincent got frozen. Did we get frozen? It's a good view to get frozen at. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Are we there again? Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That the one? This has a lot going on. Yeah, that was originally a, a poor painting, and then I painted on it. I added to it. I actually got yelled at by one of my fans because originally I just did the alien, and I didn't add all the stuff on the side. And they're like, you messed up the painting. I was like, how can I mess it up? It's my painting. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. You're What's that this behind is, beside it? Up and beside, um, into the... This one? Yeah, there, yeah, what is that about? That one's just random. There's like an alien right here. Uh, it was just another poor painting. It looks like a dragon head right here. Yeah. Amazing. Then, that's that's rocking and rolling right there. This right here is one of the first ones I started to paint with my brush. It's got like a UFO coming out. Like, I don't even know what it is, but it looks cool. There's my door again. Maybe it's one it's of my somewhere. favorite my favorite pour paintings, my Arcturian. That one was supposed to be my heart. It was blue and green originally started. So uh, to represent my heart. Oh, and that, cat. that cat was probably one of the, yeah, that one I remember. I remember him from yeah. somewhere. Maybe it was that was one. me. That originally I was just trying to draw a cat because I never drew one and I decided to turn it into a cat being not other guys like max hedrum this one no over oh, yeah. one more. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> like he just yeah that's a really cool guy he looks like a cool guy it looks a lot like my father oh, but yeah if you can see his head is split open that's his brain yeah and, and is that a UFO. squid on his shoulder a what squid on his shoulder or what's on his shoulder that's his shoulder? a mushroom that's a mushroom coming out. Oh. Because at the time I was into mushrooms and uh, DMT and stuff. And uh, this is a, a sacred circuit from Bashar. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of those, but that means expand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. I was really proud. I This one, I was walking down the street and I found $10. And I went and I bought this picture at the thrift shop and I painted the alien on it. And I also did the frame around it. And it was almost you like did a dream. The frame? Yeah, I painted that around the frame. Oh, I was wondering where are you getting these fancy frames? These are some nice frames. Ooh yeah. Um, and that guy looks like E.T. with a triangle on his head. Go back right there. Yeah. My and it was supposed to be, that's my version of an angel yeah. too. And then like a port, there's a portal. Uh, this guy looks pretty realistic too. Oh, yeah. It's like Dr. Salda's eyebrows are on there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my. I saw those eyebrows. Every time I see somebody with those eyebrows, it, I get Dr. It does. He does have some eyebrows. He does have some there, eyebrows. There's my deer and some oh, mushrooms. Puff, puff the magic little alien. Deer. Oh, that's the alien deer. getting on a ship. It looks yep. like a Sasquatch in the back behind it, almost. Up top. Yeah, that's supposed to. It's supposed to be a mushroom, but yeah. yeah. And I then think there's Sasquatch a bluebird mushroom. Oh, look! It is another one. Yeah. That's and like a. Um, that's an insectoid. Uh. A I would say it's, a, it's some kind of blue alien. I don't know. Mm, mm. Maybe an Arcturian or a, a Andromedan, maybe. But here's another one of my favorite drawings. Can you see it right there? Half of it. Okay. Let me hear it. Oh, come oh, here. There you go. Okay, rabbit. You do like the rabbits. Yeah, the it's a. Uh, rabbit hole basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's a ufo beaming down to the footsteps which was representing jesus because they're walking on water 
and it's got the alien looking in through the rabbit hole, and it's got the eclipse and a oh, UFO yeah. over there. Do That's you one think of my favorite. Do you think eclipses um, signify or are significant when it comes to the events of them moving in and out of our space? Like, do you think that? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, is the eclipse? Um, I don't know. It's quite possible. But I don't know. I mean, it could be. It definitely could be. I like your whole thought behind a lot of things is that we don't know things. You know, like we can theorize and, 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 and throw up our hypotheses, but like there's just no way to know. So there's nothing to really argue about because we, we don't know till the lights get flipped off and someone says, all right, game over. <laughs> you know, we don't know. Exactly. But, um, I have a lot more paintings if you want to take a, I could do a real quick tour. Go for it. If you can, you guys see here. I'll try to. I like that eyeball back there. I saw a big eyeball. This one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like that's a space. Amazing. A spaceman with a mushroom and a dragon hmm. in the background. He's got his thumbs up. Just it was an original pour. This is a bird. I can't see. Uh, can't really tell what I'm looking at. So that's what I, I wish we could. I wish we wish we could do the camera flip like on uh, Facebook. What? But here's my reptilian. Let's see, camera mirror top. No, it doesn't do it. I don't think. This one's got like a lyre oh, in it and a bee. Beautiful. I love that orange and yellow. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to when you start making prints. <laughs> here's my, my little dragon. Yeah, me too. This is the first painting I ever did. The very first poor painting. I was trying to paint a galaxy and it didn't necessarily okay. work out, but that's the very first one that got me going. That could be an event in the galaxy. It could be. And here's the other side of my door. Mm hmm. I just noticed something about people when they can go beyond the basic line and beyond the basic, like, like it reaches to a new level where most people might just draw the lines and the basic and, you know, one straight color in the back, but it's like, you're not afraid to go further into, yeah, the, chaos, into, the, into the chaos part and then bring order out of the chaos, even on the painting, you know? Yeah. I don't really know how to describe that, Terry, but I think, you know, like with Veronica and her books, it's like, it's it's well beyond where someone would be afraid to move further. And it's like, you're not afraid to break the lines. It's, and, it's organized chaos. Yeah, it is. It, it, organized it, it, chaos. It's, <laughs> it's not it chaos. truly I is. Think, I, don't, I don't think your work is chaos at all. It's rarely, you're you're moving from uh, in an expanded awareness, and you're bringing yeah. from from that expanded awareness into the three D, and so it's it's a multi dimensional way of right. um, of painting that you're doing. It's amazing, yeah. Right. That's why I like the breaking the wall. Like you're going beyond. Definitely. Yeah. It's definitely. I had so to conquer I'm, fear to get there too. When you, when you when you're painting, are you are you pouring and then you're going with the brush? Is that how you're getting the color effect? Okay, some of them yes, but some of them are just straight painting as well. But yeah, I started off by pouring and then like this one behind me that that was just a brush only. That is amazing. I love that. All right, I'm gonna have to. That one's just a brush only. Right. That one's just a brush only. That one's just strictly pour. Another just pour. A couple more pours. There's my. How does everyone one. feel about you spreading your paintings all throughout the house? <laughs> I don't know. How do you guys feel about me spreading the paintings around the house? They said to it's make alive. the room come alive. 
Yeah, that's nice. Well, thank you, guys. I love you. But yeah, we got paintings everywhere. Here's another dragon. I don't know if oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. Wow. And we can take a quick trip down over here. So, uh, kind of a general idea. So, this how are you, um, or have you, uh, are you selling your paintings? Um, not yet. I've, I have had a lot of people offer to buy them, but I kind of have a plan to start up my own museum. So I'd like to keep the originals. I mean, unless somebody wants to give me a million dollars or maybe not a million, but you know, unless somebody maybe, wants to pay a lot of money. A maybe a million, maybe a million. You know what I mean? <laughs> it might be. Yeah. That was my attempt to do a Pleiadian. I like it. Another one. I got this they crazy guy. They literally are everywhere. You literally have them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's my little alien room. Holy cow. I have, I don't know if you can see the lion. Yes. Now that lot, mm -hmm. that lion, I actually looked at my phone. I had a picture of a lion and I just, I just painted it. Uh, Gotta navigate through here without falling. Here's one of my favorite alien ones. Turned out pretty good. Yeah, they got a wizard. We got another alien. Got like insectoid. This is my version of a Pleiadian at the time. And on the wall here, I got this big alien. Nice. Over here, mm -hmm. got the little fairy girl. She's got like a frog on her and then goes up into a little city and stuff. They got the GFL ships on the mothership. Uh, another alien. This is my control panel. This was supposed to, I don't know if you can see it here. Yes. This is supposed to be a, a galaxy. And this is like a control panel. So like control like because i was trying i was trying to make this whole room into like the spaceship you know oh wow and uh here's a little robot and little aliens My another goodness. robot robot drinking some water and then we have an arcturian on the door here i can come down here this is so much neater than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> oh my god I didn't even know. These oh, are wow. amazing. These are amazing, Vincent. Holy cow. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. But the way that you've exploded oh. like this into a whole another room, into another room, into another room. Like, oh man, this is insane. And then oh. here, I start. you got your own art gallery, indeed. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I got all kinds of stuff going on in here. So what do, you, what do you call your collection of a, a journey through the cosmos? What do I call them? Uh, just, I don't know, paintings? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to, yeah, There's one day you'll name the collection. I guess when you say yeah. one day you'll, I feel complete. Yeah, like I think you showed the picture of this one. This is one of my favorite ones is the alien playing the guitar. Definitely, we just had a journey through the cosmos for sure, Terry. Wow. Here's another one. Oh. Then you can see I got the spaceship. Uh, it says the, what was it called? Uh, the time portal or the time shift portal. It's got mm -hmm. the alien and the UFO, and it's supposed to be a portal into another world. And then here's a spaceship, this big door right here. Uh, I did that on the uh, Robert Khalil show on New Year's, on the New Year's show. Ah, and I could hear the music when you said that too, Terry. Like Star Wars, UFO. that um, bar where they have the aliens are all coming to converse. 
you're lucky this house doesn't lift off, honestly, because you got, <laughs> you got so much in here that it, it's like the energy could lift the whole house. The pages. Yeah. I got like one, two, three tables. I'm working on this mirror over here. I did a pour on it. I'm going to paint over it yet. It's a mirror that didn't have a mirror, I found. Oh, my so I paint, God. I'm going to paint like an alien or face into it. This that's going to be amazing. Is a chair. That's a, that sign means manifest. It's another one is a sacred circuit by Darlink and Bashar. The table I did. Stack of paintings over there. This is a living, a living wow. museum where, oh, I wow. mean, at this it's point, amazing. you could just be having people come. How, how <laughs> many pictures have you got? Have you counted them? Actually, I haven't counted in a while, but I know it's over 100. And that's not, that's not, in, okay. it's not in counting my drawing. How How long does it take you to do a painting? Uh, the most I've ever spent on any one single painting was four hours. Oh, wow. So most of them, so like, they just, if it's they just, just a download to your hand, and that's it. Yeah, I just keep going until I'm done. Unless, uh, yeah. like, like a pour, an average pour painting where, or fluid art, takes me about half hour 45 minutes tops and then I paint on top of it it can take up to two three hours depending how intricate or how deep i want to go with it sometimes i've noticed if i put too much detail into it it takes away from it so i have to try and like learn when to stop <laughs> sometimes so, so now are you inspired to do ESO? so are you like um, like you wake up in the morning and then you say, I'm going to paint today, or is it more like, um, you know, you might be out for a walk and then you've got to rush back because there's something being downloaded for you? Um, I mean, what, no, what's I, your process? Well, I don't really have. It's really random. It's like, because sometimes I don't feel like painting, I just don't paint. Like, if it's a nice day out, I'm, I'm just gonna be outside to tell you the truth because I'd much rather be outside in the sun than painting. <laughs> I've never painted outside in the sun though, which I do yeah. wanna try that. But, but uh, yeah, usually it's like, I plan on doing it every night, some kind of something. Because for me, it's like, if I'm not doing something, I'm in a lack of something then, right? You still there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm liking Terry's questions. I'm so, Terry's questions. Mm, wow. okay. so are you are you looking then to do um, um, limited edition prints of these of each of them? Is that what you're wanting to do? Well, my plan was to do prints in. Uh, I still am going to do them, but I just having issues with getting my credit card into the stupid computer so I can actually do it. <laughs> but I was going to go through Teespring. They do Who like. Who has that problem? Uh, yeah, and he's an artist too. He does like, yeah, he does messages through the, the art. Isn't that interesting? Hey, I just, uh, yeah. I figured I'd do like t-shirts and then prints. They do coffee mugs and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know. I'm open to do anything. I mean, I pretty much painted anything. I painted my feet before. I painted my shoes. I painted furniture. Like if you look here, I painted this furniture too. Painted that. Painted this tape. Painted this table too, you know. Just whatever's around, I like to. I like to make things look beautiful and especially things that people were going to throw away or get turned into junk because the last thing we need is more junk in a landfill, you know? True. True. So you're, you're using acrylic paint, correct? Uh, yep. For the most part, it's all acrylic. Uh, besides like 
that rise up when I've been using like ink markers or ink pens and color pencils and pencils and stuff too. But yeah, mm -hmm. for the most part, I've been wanting to so like you, expand into oil painting and various media. Yeah, I've, I like to. I like to expand, you know, I'll get bored of something for a while and I'll try something else because it's, it's more exciting to do something different. And not only is it more exciting, it's good for your brain because you're building new, new neurological connections in your brain, which actually give you different pathways you can travel. So, so have you done anything like with a, a decoupage or to make it more like a three dimensional? Have you tried anything like that? Ooh. Uh, I don't what do you mean. What's the decoupage? I don't know what that is. Like say if you added, like, like, um, you know, like it's it's a texture. You can you can add oh, sort of like well, glue and paper, like a paper mache, and then and then you could do like some sculpting within it. No, I haven't. But with the pore painting, it's really thick, and it as it dries, it does give it a texture. But no, I haven't tried like paper mache or nothing like that. I did have the idea of trying to put crystals because I thought that would be super cool to put crystals into the paint and glue them on. I've seen people use glass shavings. I was very interested in that, but it can get kind of pricey. Yeah, and I, suppose, I suppose you could use like a gold and silver leaf and, and copper leaf as well. Yep, I actually did uh, silver leaf on that first pore painting I showed you, the first one I ever did. That actually has a little bit of uh, silver leaf flake in it. But yeah, I do. Yeah. So, so outside of that, you also do your oracle readings. Like, how often do you do that? Uh, I don't know, once or twice a month sometimes, sometimes more, oh, sometimes really? less. I just got lucky yesterday and I saw one. Yeah, I don't do them a whole lot, but I don't know, I try to, I try to do like, I try to make a couple of videos here and there every day and do a painting every day to keep my Facebook going. I also play the piano and sing and play the guitar. You're starting to sound like Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Another great artist, right? <laughs> so I don't know if maybe you want to pull a card before we close out, or then maybe Terry, you can pull a card. Like maybe you got a message for him, and then he has a message for us, and we have a message for we or something like that. I you made it back to the room already. I'm going to I'm going to pull a card from the Arcturian console deck for you. Okay. And I we got that we got we got these at um um Jenny did we you were at the conference. And what's his so, name? Um Joby. Joby. Yeah. Joby. I'm gonna um, find him on Facebook. Gonna see. I never it's like a person you've seen so many times, but then you don't know their name. Right. He took like four years to put these cards together. I thought about making jo some. But... Joby Cummings. I found yeah. them. Yeah. So. So this uh, message is for you, um, Vincent, from um, from the High Council of the Arcturians. And so what are they going to say to you? So the first one is Hold on a second. Is yeah, we this, see it. And it is, um, it is about um, the vortex, but it's also about your home, where you where you live. That's being in your in your um, 
in your body. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I know what I'm getting here. The next one is your anti-gravity, instability, and what is up is down. Anti-gravity. And that's number four. And the next one is 13, which is wise, mystic, and um, fertility from the for the from the feminine so the way that i see these cards is that you are a vortex you have this is the point where you come together and you you're very stable right now and because you're you're getting the information from above coming through you and then you are bringing it bringing it down and um and just hold on here and so what is up is down so because you're that vortex because you're 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 here so you can look at it as it's coming down to you and you're able to interpret those images those that information so your you your paintings are multidimensional. There's a lot of information in them that you haven't even discovered yet. And creative and fertility part. So it's they are sending you information. You're bringing it down, and then you're you are information. And that information that you have in those paintings is very important because you're grounding those higher frequencies through your artwork. And so sometimes you can't always express things in words, but through your art, you are able to, to take those frequencies and portray or bring it down and so that they're being grounded into the earth space and when you play your music if you if you are uh, in that mood to put on some of your music as you're making your artwork it becomes like that double whammy bringing the sound frequency plus the light frequencies and you're bringing and channeling that information into that artwork that you're doing so um, there's a big message here for you to just to continue doing it. And it's not that you doubt it, but it's like, yeah, you just you just um, need to um, just feel like, you know, you're you're wise and you're a mystic beyond your years. You don't even realize what you're what information you're bringing down. So just like continue on. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was so beautiful. It resonated. It's uh, special. It's definitely special. It's special. Well, I also do light language too. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. I know we might have should have waited for you to do last because you had such a big message, Terry. You <laughs> but Vincent, I know you got it. So Okay, so you want me to pull up? I'll pull one from the Star Seed Oracle. Awesome. I love messages anyway. And right away we got I'm sorry. I can't even read that right now. Defer. Defensive listness, right past wrongs, uprooting. So I think it's just a, being grateful for, you know, all your mistakes. And know that that's, to being grateful for our mistakes mm -hmm. and knowing that they weren't, they weren't mistakes and you weren't defensive listness. You may have felt that way. But 
it's ultimately to get you where you needed to go, where you signed up to go. Mm -hmm. I feel it because it's like um, sometimes we're sitting there asking for what what we want, and then when you get it, it's like <laughs> we want a bucket. I don't know. Then I also have the hires longing for home, homesick for the stars. That one resonates for me because I would really love to connect in the 3D realm. Like, ever since I've seen that UFO, like, I want to know. Because I don't know for sure if it was government or if it was alien, but I intuitively feel like it's alien. Or not alien, but extraterrestrial. Uh, but home is here. Home is mm -hmm. your consciousness is home. Everything within your consciousness is your home. Mm -hmm. You can't leave consciousness, so it has to be your home. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. I like that, yeah. Being present, ground in. Um, what did what do we always say, Terry? Um, just to be present and to ground in the joy timeline. Bring in the joy timeline. This is about that is what yeah. ascension. People think ascension means leaving the body. Your highest, like, no, actually, actually, it's bringing your highest self right here into yeah. this space. Bring it in. Yeah, the most Bring spiritual your thing. Yeah. Yeah. The most spiritual thing you could do in your entire life is enjoy your life and have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. If you're not having fun and enjoying your life, you're missing the point of being spiritual. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Agree with you. Yeah. I find it people kind of turning spirituality into a job, not that the doing the work for others, but even for themselves, like take a break from researching so much, take a break from reading so much, take a break. You know, like you even said yeah. this morning, the pictures, right? Like you're constantly taking a picture and recording information, recording, like we're constantly in this state of recording information for evidence, but not like, okay, the bliss of like sitting with your kids and telling Without jokes, you know? Yeah. Well, or, Go ahead. Well, the whole, the whole thing behind it, though, is when you're following your joy and you're following your passion, you're emitting a vibration that is a higher frequency. And if you want to get higher and closer to source, that's how you do it. Right. Well, you got your head on straight, Vincent. And I'm just, that's when I see you, I just kind of knew I've been watching you just over time, just blossom more and more and more. So I'm really grateful to be able to talk to you and that you said yes, because um, I see great people all the time and, and they're just too shy to, to come on out and talk about it. But I feel like everybody has something to offer. And um, I'm just grateful that you were brave and have decided to go and, you know, start talking you know, and sharing with people. So it's definitely going to be a domino effect because you're going to affect so many other people. I'm extremely grateful as well. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm nervous and I'm scared every time I pick up a camera or go on, <laughs> even on Facebook. I am nervous as heck, but you know what? I'm not going to let that stop me from my dreams and from my highest excitement. Yeah. Do it scared. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, because oh you know what? Because once you're done, you ain't scared no more. You're happy you did it. Just like, just like waking up That's in the right. morning doing push-ups. You're scared to do the push-ups, but guess what? After you do the push-ups, you're happy you build some muscle. Yeah. And that can be years of being nervous. I don't. When did you stop being nervous, Terry? Did are you still nervous, or do you just like, heck, I'm going? You know, I. Because I've been doing, I used to be really nervous, but I started doing meditation and doing um, like teaching meditation classes through Zoom. And so 
whether there was um, they were small classes, only a few people, you know, four or five people, sometimes maybe a little bit more. But just that whole uh, experience with doing Zoom, um, just, you know what, you, you get nervous the first couple of times, but it was like, first of all, I'm teaching class and then, well, we just have to go through Zoom with COVID and stuff. And so it just became... Um, Oh, so you were already gay. Yeah, I don't up. look at this as any different than Yeah, well, <laughs> more or less. I mean, I get nervous, especially when I get interviewed with questions that I'm not prepared for. <laughs> but like with you. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, she did an acoustic journey for me. And then afterwards I said, Hey, don't you want to be on a YouTube with us? And then she popped up on there. So <laughs> she she was going live. That same day. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that was right that was room. nervous. Yeah. That was nerve wracking, but yeah, you have to push tell yourself you. outside your outside of your comfort zone, right? That's the hard thing. Move outside of the comfort zone. But I'll tell you, you two definitely made it a lot easier for me. Like I felt, I never felt so comfortable on a podcast so far. So y'all are right here. Thank right you. Here. You are. You two are amazing. Thank you. I Thank keep telling you. people, come on, it's like a really world. are. Come on, and big mama and little mama is gonna give you a hug. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I I used to give speeches in the office and I did vision board classes. And I tell you, even starting with YouTube, I was nervous still. That's four years in the office talking. And all that stuff and still on zoom and it's that you know worrying about rejection but then now it's just i guess i'm not worried about being rejected anymore because i found my audience you know what i mean the, the people that want to hear me and i don't have people talking crazy in the comments and then i got theory on my side so i just throw her under the bus every now and then and just <laughs> answer the question terry <laughs> And so, I don't know. It feels good. You know what really feels good? When you start to get to the point where people start saying thank you for that message, and then that becomes more important than anything else is, wow, well, someone needed that. So I, I, I'm going to give it because I have it and someone needed it for me to give. So, yeah. Definitely. If, if there's stuff that resonates with you, it's going to resonate with a lot of other yeah, people because I think that's part we're all of what one. We're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we need to support people along the journey. And it's like, there's so many people who are ready to cut other people down, but it's like, no, we're here together and we're not going anywhere without our brothers and sisters in arms, you know, so you can cut the, <laughs> cut the tail off, but the dog ain't going anywhere without it. So we have to go back and pick up the pieces. So you know what? We support each other along the way. Maybe you don't you know see all so the eyes with people, but you just still support them. So I got this Merlin book, The 21 Lessons of Merlin, right? And it's so funny that you said that. It said, the true goal of spiritual mm -hmm. evolution lies not in a union of opposites, but an absent of opposites so that understanding that we're all one right like we're not separate and that's how i take that but that's awesome well if you look at the the simulation theory it is all one just with different perspectives different perspectives of the one it's all one simulation but just a different perspective of it different aspects yeah of the same being true because you think about it you wake up in the morning you got to decide which one of you you're going to be today like am i going to be the crazy vince today or am i going to be the sleepy vince and so we can understand that within ourselves that this same concept we're all a part of this whole and we can't start damning each other to hell so <laughs> we gotta be together and send out well, those positive vibes to one another. It's awesome. It's awesome. Another reason why I decided to come out and with my art on videos and stuff is 
because I was, a, you know, on drugs and I've conquered that. And I wanted to show other people that they can find something in their life to live for too. Because the whole time when I was on drugs, I never was, I never was seeing people. I never seen people beat drugs. I just seen people go underground and be dead, you know? And I really like, I, I find that so motivating and such a, a power to me to give to people. I can give them that sight. I can give them that light at the end of the tunnel that somebody did it. Somebody didn't, didn't just die. They decided to not die and do something. Yeah, you, you're letting, you let the light overcome the shadow, right? You, you opened, yeah. you let the light shine through you and it, and it overcame the shadow. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we still all have shadows that we work with. You, you never just, you never just conquer your shadow completely. You have to learn how to walk with your shadow. He is on point, one hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> when you know what because you know, what you know. Without light, dark, or without darkness, light can't exist, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, you just your know, perception. You know which one is leading you now. Light. Yeah. Right? Exactly. You're, 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 I, I just you're, the light is the one that's in charge, no longer the shadow. Well, from the light, you can see that the dark is an option, but from the dark, you can't see the light as an option. Wow. That's really powerful. And, then, and you can choose the light. I think we could do this all night. I think um, I, you're probably going to start teaching some classes outside of this. <laughs> so, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. But, um, yeah, we thank you again. And Terry, I don't know if you have some closing words. Me? Or Terry. Or Maybe she can't hear me. Uh, I don't think she can. Okay. Well, Vince, um, how do people follow you? Um, do you have Instagram? Are you on Telegram? Are you on Facebook? I'm just, right now, I'm pretty much Facebook exclusive. I do have it linked up to Instagram, I think, but I don't go on Instagram and check it. It just, I just linked it to my okay. Facebook. So, so I'm just it. Facebook. You have to do paintings if you start messing with Instagram, because you can mess around, find one video and then boom, you'll be, your whole day will be shot. <laughs> so I have to like yeah. to sometimes because it gets to be too much. Yeah, I try. I I don't really have much time to like go looking on Facebook all the time. I just pretty much post my stuff and then I'll uh, throughout the day I'll check my notifications and that's about it. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Terry, did you have last words? Um, well, you know, uh, Vincent, you you are very inspiring. Your work is amazing, and I wish you uh, just so much success with with whatever you have, um, however your next part of the journey where it takes you with with your artwork, and and keep us keep us in in you know in the loop of what's happening, and and um, you know um, when you're ready to. When you're ready to let some of these uh, pieces go, whether they're uh, prints or whatever, let us know. Was, um, they would be certainly find many homes, I'm sure. Well, I will definitely do that. And I'm grateful for to meet you two. You guys are awesome. Thanks. And to be on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll end here. Thank you for everybody. Please like, subscribe, share. If you have any comments on the work, on the interview, how do you think we did? Let us know. And we look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Good night. Bye.